Hi. I hope you're safe and well. Your loved ones are safe and well. I know that's not true for a lot of people. Um, it can be a hard world. From doing these videos, uh, it's really clear that some people think that God's out to punish us or that God just doesn't care about us, if God even exists. And so the idea of how does God love us is really confusing to some people. Their experience leads them to wonder, what do those words mean? Well, one thing we might be able to take from this uh, question is, what is the nature of true love? And if you're willing to consider it, I'd like you to uh, think about the qualities of true love. I think true love has three qualities that are important. First quality is that uh, true love requires something to love. And so God couldn't have been fulfilled just sitting around in a void by, um, by himself. So he created the world and created us to love. Now, a second quality of love is that love wants to be freely loved in return. The idea of uh, having a friend who's your friend because you pay them a large amount every week, um, I don't think most of us would find was a very fulfilling friend. Um, or the idea that you've got somebody who says all sorts of nice things about you, but only because otherwise you threaten them with horrible punishments. Um, would you be able to rely on that person um, and even necessarily feel like you were loved? Or what if you had a robot that just kept saying wonderful things to you because you programmed the robot to do that? Would that be very fulfilling? I think most of us don't think so. I think we have some sense that real love requires somebody to choose to love us. And so for that reason, God is very careful to leave us free to choose to believe he exists or doesn't exist, to choose to listen to what he says about how we live our life and not live our lives, choose the principles and values we're going to use to guide what we do and say. This is what God wants for us, is that freedom. And then the third quality of love is he wants to share what is his, that we might be happy. Now, some people say, oh, you mean eventually in heaven. And yeah, heaven is part of, of my picture, is that uh, God wants us to be happy uh, to eternity with him in heaven, if we've chosen that life. But I think it also shows up in this world. Uh, there are people who have all sorts of, of money, all sorts of natural things, they have their health, and yet they're really unhappy people. They're uh, resentful of what they don't have, they want more, they're not very trustworthy, uh, they're um, pretty miserable human beings, in spite of all that they have. On the other hand, I've known some people that don't have very good health, that don't have very much money, um, and yet, they're grateful for what they have, and they're the kind of people you want to be around. Um, they're people that have wisdom of life that they're willing to share. They have happiness now, and that's the kind of happiness that, that God wants for us. He wants us to learn and grow from what he teaches. So, the nature of true love is it has to have something to love. True love has to be freely chosen in return. And true love wants to give happiness from self. So, some people say, well, yeah, but what's God think about bad people or uh, people who go to hell? Well, listen to this statement. See, see what you think of it. God loves go out and extends not only to good people and good things, but also to evil people and evil things. It goes out not only to people and things that are in the heaven, but also to those that are in hell, not only Michael and Gabriel, but also to the devil and Satan. For God is the same everywhere from eternity to eternity. As he says, he makes his sun rise on good people and evil people and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. That's from Matthew chapter 5. 
Despite this, evil people and things are still evil. This is a result of what is in the people and the objects themselves. Evil people and things do not receive the love of God as it is truly and most profoundly is. They receive the love of God according to their own nature, much the way thorns and nettles receive the heat from the sun and the rain from the sky. So they receive it, but the way they receive it doesn't lead to a, a very good result. Now, uh, that passage might lead you to think that there's some of us that are just born good and some of us that are just born evil, but that's not the way I see it. Each of us arrives at adult life with a set of choices, some with better backgrounds, some not. And then based on our choices, some of us go in directions that are more and more self-centered, more and more concerned with just whatever they can get in this world. And other people maybe start out that way, but then start making better choices, start making choices that take care of other people. They lead to greater wisdom. So I think God's told us a lot of things to try and help us with this. I think of the a statement from the uh, New Testament. This is from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, all these things I say to you, and I like to think of it's all that God's taught us, all these things I say to you that my joy might be yours and your joy might be full. So properly understood, the Old and New Testament, every bit of it is trying to lead us to a better, happier, more useful life in this world and hopefully to eternity in heaven. Well, there's more to say about this quality of God's love uh, and I hope to get back to it in a, a later video. Anyways, best wishes to you all.